Come on in, let me give you a tour. What is that? Welcome, this is my home studio where I do quite a bit of photography and the occasional bit of video, but unfortunately because of the vast expanses of hard surfaces, we get a bit of an echo in here, as you could well hear. So it's not conducive to doing a lot of video, but I thought I'd give you a quick run around here and then we'll head off back to Perth and I'll show you where I record most of my sit down videos that you've seen perhaps on my YouTube channel. Stick one, oh shit. I'm standing on my cyclorama. Now, I've always wanted a cyclorama, so when we did the addition to this house a couple of years ago, I thought, right, I'm getting one. What is a cyclorama? Well, simply, if you have a look at the floor here, there is no hard corner. There is no, what is that? There is no 90 degree angle. It's an infinity look. And for photography, that's pretty important. So what are these things here? These are what we call soft boxes. Uh, essentially, there's light inside there, flashes, and they're connected to a camera via remote control. And then when I take a photo, these flash. So typically, if I was photographing a model, and this is the beauty of this thing here, that you can just simply push that up like that. And with a bit of positioning, I might stand here, or have a model stand here. I've got a bit of light on this side, a bit of light on this side, camera sits there, and bang, you don't see the flashes, you just see the nice light on either side of um, a beautiful model's face. On the floor here, which is just painted white, I've got these carpet dots, which are great for, for me standing on so I don't get my filthy feet staining up the white paint. Uh, and the model obviously would stand back here and he or she would be standing on the white. Or if I decide, hey listen, I would like a different coloured backdrop, and the one I use most often is black. So I'll simply roll this down and look at that. And if I don't want black, I can pull down blue or this one here, which is a gray. This one fell down the other day. I love this system that I can simply wheel lights backwards and forwards like that, because I can tell you the pain in the bum thing about being a photographer shooting in a studio like this is with lights, you do not want tripods on the ground. So to get rid of those tripods and, and have all the lights off the ground is a real plus. If I'm shooting in here with a client, I've got a nice little lounge area for them. And you might've even noticed this picture on the back wall this is Lancel and Sand Dunes, which are just out the back of the house, probably a kilometre from here. Quite magnificent, but this shot here is actually seven pictures stitched together in one and then put behind glass. I've also had a number of clients who wanted similar sort of projects like this, even featuring F1 pictures. Now, in case you're wondering what I'm using to film this on today, I have an iPhone 12 Max Pro, I think it is. And on this side, I have an EOS R. Two cameras, two different angles, two different picture qualities. The actual house is about 10 years old, but a couple of years ago, we had this section added, and my wife was very adamant that if we're going to have models here, they need a mirror, which is here and sizable. But then when you look along here, there is an awful lot of storage. In here, I've got a number of my uh, F1 driver's books. Somebody asked me once in one of my Q and A's what photographers I admired, and I love this fella, Vincent LaFerray. And the other guy I quite love is the author of this book, Joe McNally, who does some marvelous stuff with Flash. And I've learned a heck of a lot from reading his books. These cupboards have a treasure trove of stuff, all like um, quadcopters. I've got two of them. This is a small one that I use for stuff that's not commercial. And the other one is an Inspire 2. That gives you much better picture quality. Continuing along here, um, drawers full of lenses. Down here, there's lots of grip and gear. These are handy for mounting cameras on the side of a car. Stretchy arms, lots of ball heads. Down here is a complete underwater kit, which is rarely used. Oh, this is some flash gear, pro photo gear, which is great kit. And about five times the price of this Jinbei stuff that's absolutely fine for me. And they're about a third or a fifth of the price of the good stuff. Over here, I've got an A3 printer and a little charging station that my wife suggested I needed. And as you can see, it's quite neat and tidy. This isn't grass and it's not wet. I want to spend a brief minute on this setup here. This is a, what we call a top-down photographic rig. So I can put stuff on the table down here and have this camera here shoot directly down at it. I've got a couple of cheap lights 
in little soft balls here, have them throwing some light down. I've also got this round thing oh, which I'm just mucking around with. Over here I've got three rolls of paper. I've got white, brown butcher's paper here that rolls down and some black. Now, now that's pretty handy when I'm shooting product here on this table. I need a background for it. And then the other thing I can do is actually wind this white paper all the way down and write stuff on it. You've got to work out where your corner frame is, about there and the top right. So I've got to keep my text inside here. Then I can write whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to issue a plea to you. So in this storeroom, you probably noticed that on the ground, I have some colorful art. Now this is actually a jigsaw. Other interesting stuff in here, a monstrous softbox, some F1 memorabilia. You might remember this backdrop, which was featured in some of my first videos. A great rack for all of my lighting stands. And over here, some more photographic backdrops. One final thing, you will have never seen anything like this. This is an arrangement that a friend of mine made me. And as you can see here, there are some well, Christmas lights at the end of that one and at the end of that one. It's on this little pole which is sticking to the ground and then you spin it around. I won't do that now because I'll obviously hit the ceiling. But the end result is a photo that looks like this. I've shot some pretty interesting stuff here in Lancelin. Some of the more controversial stuff is uh, a model we had in a meat cabinet down at the butcher shop here. It caused a bit of a furor around the world. But anyway, that's Lancelin. This is my studio here. Let's go 90 minutes south back to Perth and I'll show you my Perth office studio. So you've seen my home studio. Now, this is my studio here at Messages on Hold, and this is where I record most of my F1 stuff. It's compact, but it does the job. So I'll sit here and look down that lens there, which is a Canon 5D Mark III. And I will talk to camera up here. I've got a Sennheiser 416 microphone. There are four light panels here, two, these two here, uh, charged with the responsibility of illuminating me and these two back here pretty much light the back wall. Now, a lot of people ask me about this. It's not 3D, as you can see. It's simply a print that my son Tyler did and then put some LED lights that change color. Uh, this was sent to me by a very talented painter and it happens to fit nicely there. And I always put a couple of pictures up uh, on the back walls here just to give you something interesting to look at in the background. The LED light panels are on these little thingos that go up and down easily, which is pretty handy. This is a 5D Mark III, which I've got outputting to a small monitor here so that I can see what's going on. Right below the lens here is a little cheat sheet of things I need to say when I do my outro. This is actually a window over here which I've had soundproofing put on. And when I record, I will close this door and I will pull that curtain across because this is very, very echoey if I don't do that. I also have one of these things, a teleprompter, which sits in front of my Canon camera lens and allows me to put an iPad down here, which has a script on it, and I can see it in the mirror. If you've used one of these things, you'll know that the camera can quite easily shoot in behind here. I'll see if I can put this around here. And you can actually see through that mirror. But when I look at it from the other direction from here, it's fantastic because all I see is the reflection of the script underneath here that sits on an iPad. Now I know some of you might have spotted this picture behind here. There's actually two. Uh, I'll tell you quickly about these. These are promotional stunts I've done going back, I'm thinking, 20 to 30 years ago now. I did three years in a row with arrows. This was the middle year, and I made this tyre dress out of car tyres from a mob called Barago in Italy. Um, Handmade that outfit, got a model to wear it. Who got Joss Verstappen, Pedro de la Rosa. And what you can't see there is a huge media throng of photographers and video people, all taking photos of that, and of course, giving me some great advertising for my company messages on hold. And the year after that, I did uh, this girl here. She's wearing a bikini, and of course over the top is some tire tracks made of vinyl cut signage. 
I can't think of anything else to say, so I think I'm free to let you go and do what you were doing, except please like the video if you haven't liked it yet, subscribe, and also join as a member. I'd love to have more members and you get a whole lot of freebies involved in that deal. You can find all of my images at ProStarPix.com. If you're looking for a gift for an F1 fan or something for yourself, head to KimElman.com where you'll find my 23 F1 driver photo books, they're great. And for great content all through the week, head to Instagram at Kim Elman. That's it, nothing more to say. Thanks for watching, stay passionate. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen.